Hello guys, welcome to another video. This one is paper one of May and June 24, uh, 2004 actually. So let's move on to question number one. First one is express this as a decimal, pretty easy. And it's 7 divided by 100, that will be 0 0.07. Right. Now for this one, express this as a percentage. So whenever you see as a percentage, you have to multiply by 100. So you have to move. So two zeros, one, two, that will be 8%. Okay. Now question two, express this as a fraction in its lowest term. So we have to simplify this. So let's do one by one. So 72 divided by 108. So both are even, divide by 2, we will have 54, 2 we have 3, 6, divide by 2 again, we will have 2, 7, that will be uh, 1, 8. Now we can divide by 3, you will have 9, you will have 6, divide by 3 again, you have 3, and you have 2. So in the end you have 2 over 3. Now for this one, uh, it is just fractions, you have to add them. So the first thing you, you see is that the base are different, so we have to find the LCM by multiplying with each other. Then we have to find the, we have to cross multiply, 7 times 1 is 7, plus 4 times 3 is 12. 19 over 21, so 19 over 21. Now question number 3, we have 63 divided by 0 0.9. So pretty easy, and just write this down, divide by 0 0.9. So if you want to move one decimal place, you have to add one zero. So that becomes 630 divided by 9. 9 into 63, that will be 7. That will be 70. So your answer is 70 for this one. Now for part B, uh, add brackets to the expression in the answer space to make this correct. So you can only try one by one. So let's say if I were to put this one here, 7, 2, divide by 4, what is that? 1, 1, 18. Right, 18. So that will be 18, then 80 times 2, so it's not good. So we can put this one here. So let's say if I put so it's 1 plus 7, 2, divide by 4 times 2. If I put this here, I have to do this one first, so 4 times 2 will be 8, and then 72 divided by 8, that will be 9, and then 1 plus 9, that will be 10. So that is 10, that is 10, so I have to put this here. So this one, we can only find out the answer by trying one by one. So that's the only way to do that, and you should be getting this two brackets. Now question number four, we have simplified this, so we have to bring the two inside, so pretty easy, becomes three power two, x three times two, that will be nine, x six. And part B, given that 16 power minus half times k equal to one, find the value of k. So what is 16? We know 16 can also be four power two. Now what is 16 power half? It is 4 power 2, half, that will be 4 power, which is 1 over 4. So now replace this one back in the equation. You have 1 over 4 times k equal to 1. So k is, by cross multiply, it will be 4. That's the value of k. Now question number 5 we have in the diagram a, EF, so EF is a straight line. Now we have AB is parallel to CD, so AB and CD are in the same direction. So what I like to do is always I like to extend those lines just a little bit to have more information from this diagram. So just a little bit, right. Now it says BC, sorry, AB bisects FAC. So where's AB? This one is AB bisects f a c so basically what it means bisects it means it cuts the angle exactly in half so this angle is 58 this also will have to be 58 that's what it means now question part one find the value of x so pretty easy the value of x will be what so if, if this is a straight line this one will be 180 
So x will be 180 minus this minus this. So 180 minus 58, that will be uh, 2, 2, 1, minus 58 again. That will be 1, 10, 4, 64. So x will be 64 degrees. Now find the value of y. Y is this one. So here what do we have? So if you observe, uh, this angle here will be 58, 58, because they are alternate angles. So in that case, this also will be 58, because they are vertically opposite each other. So y will be 58 as well. Now question number 6. Given that a is equal to this, find the determinant of a. So pretty easy have to cross multiply so 3 times 2 minus minus 1 times 4 that will be 6 minus minus 4 that will be 10 right now part 1 part B find the A inverse to find inverse we have to find the adjoint matrix of A so pretty easy we have to change the pos position of these two 2 3 this becomes 1 this becomes minus 4 so from this we can find out A inverse is 1 over 10 times A, this one, 1, 3. So this will be A inverse and this is the determinant of A. Okay, uh, question number 7. A pendulum of length 105, that's the length 105, is suspended from O, that's the point O. Now it swings 3 degrees on either side of the vertical from A to B, so from A to B. So this is 3, 3, so together they will be 6. Now taking pi to be 22 divided by 7, calculate the nth of the arc AB. AB. So pretty easy, as we know by formula, it is always the angle in between, which is 6 over 360 times 2 pi r, 2 times pi, which is 22 over 7, times r which is the radius 105 now we can simplify so 6 1 60 now divide by 7 here that will be 1 5 and then we can divide by 2 that will be 1 that will be 30 divide by 3 divide by 15 that will be 1 that will be 2 and divide by 2 that will be 1 11 so your answer will be 11 will be the length of the arc AB, 11 centimeters. So now question number 8, expressed as a single fraction in its simplest form. So as always, if the base is different, you have to find the LCM. So in this case, we have to multiply them by each other. And then we do cross multiply. So that will be 2x plus 4 minus x plus 3. So simplify, that will become x plus 7 over the same thing, which is x minus 3, x plus 2. This will be your answer. Now, question number 9. Some children will ask how many television programs they had watched on the previous day. The table shows the result below. So now it tells you that if the median is 2, find the value of y. So how would you find the median? Usually you would uh, find the middle value and do 2. Right, so what does that tell you? If this value here is the middle value, if that's the median value, so here we have 3 plus 7, 10. So here we will need also to have 10 values. So basically, y needs to be 10 because this one is the median values. Now for part b, if the median is 1, find the greatest possible value of y. The same method, if the median was in this group here. So what is the greatest possible value of y? You will take, um, so if it can be any of those values, it can be the 8th, 9th, or 10th value in this one, because 7th value is here. So how do we make y the biggest value? By taking the max possible. So here it will be the 10th value. Median will be the 10th value. 
so in that case it will have 9 before it it has to have 9 so y will be 8 because this will be 1 plus 8 8 will be your maximum value for y that is your answer for question number 9 You can always use a formula as well, but that's just a way to uh, to do it as well. So question number 10, here we have, express this in standard form. We just have to move two decimal place, one, two. So we have 2.173 times 10, power four. Okay, uh, now part B, arrange the following numbers in order, starting with the smallest. So which one is the smallest? So first thing we can do is express every number to the same power. So here we have power 5. Let's make every one to the power 5. Okay. So um, for this one, we have to move one place. So 0 0.25 times 10 power 5. This one will be two places. So 0 0.226 times 10 power 5. And this one will be 2.173 times 10 power 5. Now we can compare the numbers in front. So which one is the smallest? So it's 0 0.031 times 10 power 5. Next one will be 0 0.2. So it will be 22.6. And then this one will be 2.5 times 10 power 4. And then last one will be 217.3 times 10 power 2 wait so 3 okay mistake so it has to be here actually 0 0.0.217 0 .217. so in that case this one has to move to here so yeah I'm, I made a mistake here so we have to rearrange this one is actually um, here so let's do that again because I made a mistake in the conversion of my powers. This one is okay. This one needs to be this one, which is 217.3 times 10 power 2. And then it needs to be this one, which is 22.6 times 10 power 3. And the last one is 2.5 times 10 power 4. So this is the correct answer, not this one. Now, question number 11, we have a function f, f of x equal to this fraction, part a, given that f of 1 equal to k, find the value of k. So basically this means f1 equal to k, find the value of k. So f1 is f1, f1 is replacing the value of x by 1, so 1 plus 5 divided by 3, which is 6 divided by 3, that is 2, that is k, k is 2. Now, part b. Given that f inverse equal to this, find the value of c and d, so we have to find inverse of f. So first step, let y equal to f of x, which is this. Then we try to make x the subject of formula. So we will have x plus 5. So x will be 3y minus 5. So in this case, we have f inverse of x equal to 3x minus 5, where? c is equal to 3 and d is minus 5. Now question number 12, it is given that x equal to this, y this and z equal to this. Find the value of x minus z. So x is minus 3.5 minus 4.5. So when you're, when, you, when you're doing subtraction of negative numbers, it's like we take out the minus outside it becomes 3.5 plus 4.5 that becomes minus 8 so minus 8 now for part b given that this y plus z so y plus d to t ratio of t is 4 to 15 find the value of t so pretty easy let's do this one first what is y plus z so 1.5 plus 4.5 this will be 6 6 ratio to t is 4 to 15. So how do you convert 4, 6 to 4? You have to divide by, so to convert 6 to 4, you have to divide by 1.5. If you check, uh, you have to be 1. 
So if you move one decimal place, you have the 1.0. That will become 4. So by dividing by 1.5, I move from 6 to this one. How do you move back? You have to multiply by 1.5. So what is 15? So 1.5 times 15. So if you know this already, that's good, uh, but do one by one. So 5 times 5 is 25. That will be 75, 0. That will be 5, 1. That will be 5, 2, 2. So one decimal place, that will be one decimal place. So the value of t will be 22.5. That's the value of t. So basically the ratio at first was 6 to 22.5. So if you want to find this value, I know, I know it's not pretty, it's not obvious, so you can do. You see, we have 4 here, we have 6, we just take 4, divide by 6. Or you can do the other way, sorry, you have to do initial value, which is 6, divided by 4, you will get 1.5, and then you will know that 6 divided by 1.5 will be 4. So basically, if you divide by 1.5, by it means that to convert t to 15, you have to divide by 1.5, but if you want to convert this back to t, you have to multiply by 1.5. That's how you get the value of t. Okay. Question uh, number 13. String is used to measure distance around, around two globes. That's g1, and we have also g2. So part one, the length of the string required to go around the globe of g1 is 157.5 centimeters. So the actual length of the equator is this much. On the axis below, draw a graph which will enable you to convert the length of string to the actual distances. So basically the ratio here, as you can see, it is 155 is equal to 40. Basically that's the ratio, so pretty easy. The first point is always going to be 0, 0, and then it will be 157. 0.5 so 50 uh, so this 10 square will be 50 one square is 5 this is 75 and then it will be between here okay so sorry it's 157 my bad mistake so 157 it cannot be will be right here so 155 57 will be here and then there's 40,000 that should be this point okay so in that case we join those two to form that graph just like that okay so that's the graph that we uh, need um, now for part B the flight path between two places A and B around globe G1 requires 35 centimeter of string Okay, so we have a place called, we have two places called A and B, and the flight, so A and B, A to go to B, it requires 35 centimeter of string. So now use my graph to estimate the actual distance between A and B. So pretty easy. So what is 35? So 35 will be here. And what is the actual distance? It will be graph, will be right here. This one is what? If this is um, 5,000, so one square is 1,000, so this one needs to be 9,000. So it represents 9,000 for the distance between A and B by using your graph. Now for part two, on the other globe G2, the same flight path between A and B requires 17.5 centimeters. That's a different one. Uh, write down the value of volume of globe G2 and volume of globe G1. So we have to use this one to find the ratio of the volume. So pretty easy. So here we know it is 17.5, but this one was 35, so let's write down. So G1 to G2, the ratio. So the, the length for the string for G1 was 35, but this one was 17.5. If you want to simplify, divide by 17.5 on both sides, you will have 1 and 2. That's the volume of their length. Now, sorry, not volume, but that's the ratio of their length. Now, if you want to find the ratio of 
their volume, you have to cube them. So that will become 1 cube, 2 cube. That will be 8 to 1. So volume of globe 2 will be 1 over 8. That is your answer for part this. Okay, that is question uh, 13. Now question number 14, we have this graph here. We have a point A is minus 4 minus 1 uh, and uh, AC is parallel to the x-axis. So this is same direction as the x-axis. So now what do we have? We have part 1. The equation of the line BC is equal to this. Find the x-coordinate of, of C. Pretty easy. So what is the equation of the line AC? It is a horizontal line, so the equation will be y equal to minus 1, because this is the x and y, so y minus 1. So the point C is the point where they intersect, these two lines intersect, so we have to solve them simultaneously. So y is minus 1, replace, minus 1 plus 2x becomes 4, so 2x becomes 5, so from this x becomes 5 over 2. So part 1 is 5, so 2.5 for the x-coordinate. Now part b, the equation of a, b is y equal to x plus 3. Write down the inequalities which describe the region inside of this triangle a, b, c. So since we know all the three lines, we can write that region. So this is our first line. So b, c is given by y plus 2x equal to 4. Then a, b is y x plus 3. So as you can see, this region inside is less than this, so less than this, it will be first one, will be uh, y plus 2x, less than 4, it needs to be above this, so y more than minus 1, then below this, have to be y less than x plus 3. So this is the, the inequalities that define this region inside. So we don't put equal sign here because it says inside of the triangle. So we don't put the equal sign. Now question number 15, we have A, B, C are three ships. So A, B, C, they are three ships. B is due west of A, okay? So part one, given that the uh, A, B, C, so A, B, C is 22, write down the bearing of C from B, of C, from B. So let's see what angle are we trying to find. We are trying to find the bearing of C from B. So this is our north line. So we are trying to find this angle. Since it is given that B is due west of A, this means it is a horizontal line. This is 90. So this will be 90 minus 22. That will be um, 68. Yeah, okay, so that is 68. So bearing of C from B will be 68 degrees. Now part B, by using your protractor, find the bearing of A from C. So A from C, let's find out how would you find that. So from C, so bearing of A from C will be this angle. So there's two parts to it. One part is this one, 180, and this one. So we have to find the value of this angle using your protractor. So let's measure this one. So uh, this value gives me about, this is 15, this will be about 18. So 18. So for me I have 18 here. So this whole angle will be 18 plus 180. That will be 198. That is my answer. You may have 200 as well. That should be okay as well. So that's question 15. Let's move on to the next one. So question 16, we have Mariam's height is 1.52 meters, correct to the nearest centimeters. State the lower bound of her height. So height. Okay, so since we have this in centimeters, we can convert this to centimeters. That will be 1.52 centimeters. 
So as you know, we take the measurement, which is 1.52, plus minus, we take this one, the error, divided by 2. That will be 1.52.5 and 1.51.5. So the lower bound will be this one. This is centimeters. You can convert this back to meters if you want to. So that will be uh, 1.515 meters. Now for part B, the length of each of Mariam's paces is this. Okay, that's the length. She walks at a constant speed of 2 pace per second. So 1 pace is this, 2 pace per second. Calculate the distance in kilometers that she walks in 1 hour. So let's find out. So in 1 second, she walks 2 paces. Let's find out in 1 hour how many paces she walks. So 1 hour is what? 1 hour is 60 minutes, which is equal to this much seconds. So let's find out. She will have 2 times this. Sorry. That will be 72 paces in 1 hour. Now, we have to find this distance, um, so we know that one pace is 0 0.55 meters, so 7,200 pace will be 0 0.55 times 7,200. That's the in terms of meters. But now if you want to convert this back to kilometers, you have to divide by 1,000 kilometers. So let's simplify. So we can bring the two zeros here. 1, 2. So what is 55 times 72? Let's do this on, on this side. So 55 times 72. That will be uh, 10, 1, 0, 35, 30, 8, 0, 6, 9, 3. So your answer here will be 3960 divided by 1000. That should be 3.96. So 3.96 km for part B. Now 17, solve this equation. Whenever you see solve is to find the value of x. So we cross multiply, this will be 12 will be x minus 1 times x plus 3. So 12 will become x squared plus 3x minus x minus 3. That will be 12. We have x squared. This will be uh, plus 2x minus 3. Simplify 2x. We send this one over here. So minus 3 minus 12 will be minus 15. Now we have to factorize. x squared is x times x. 15 is 3 times 5. So 3 times 5. For me to get plus 2, I have to plus 5 minus 3 equal to 0. So x will be 3. x is minus 5. So the two values of x will be minus 5 or x can be 3. Now question number 18, the base of the pyramid is a square okay, uh, with diagonals of length 6. So this diagonal has length 6. This is x, this is a right angle, basically. Now what else? It says the sloping spaces are isosceles triangles with equal sides of 7. So these are isosceles triangle with uh, equal sides of 7. This is 7 and 7. Okay. Now the height of the pyramid is L. Find the height of the pyramid. Find the value of L. So as you can see, the height is inside. It's called this. So if this is 6, these two are the same, this has to be 3. So let's take this triangle out. So right now we have this triangle, which is this. This is a right angle triangle. Has this side is 7. This is square root of L. And the base is 3. Find the value of L. So we can find this by using the Pythagoras theorem. So we know 7 square minus this square equal to square right this becomes 
this becomes L equal to 49 minus 9 becomes 40. So the value of L is 40. That is question 18. Now question number 19 part A, we have a sale of a camera. So calculate the percentage reduction on the price. So what is the sale price? So this is the initial price minus 280. Let's find the reduction will be 120. Now for the percentage reduction, that will be 120 divided by initial price times 100. That will go away, divided by 4, that will be 30. So 30% 30 will be the percentage reduction. Now for part B, Matthew invested this much. This is your P for investment at 6% simple interest per year. How much interest he had earned after 8 months? So we have to find month in terms of year. So to convert month in 14, 2 years, we have to do 8 divided by 12. Because in 1 year, we have 12 months. That's why. So now we have to find the interest. Interest is equal to P R T. So P is the investment, so 500 times the rate, 6% times T, which is 8 over 12. 0, 0 goes away. 1, 2, 1, 4, which is 20. So he earned only $20. Question number 20. This one is a locus question. So we have the diagram in the answer space is a map showing the section of a coastline and a beacon on a land. So we have a beacon here. And we have the coastline is here, that's the land. Now, fishing boats are, can only operate when they are, part one, not more than 6.5 km from the beacon. So from the beacon, it needs to be less than 6.5 km. So the scale of the map is one centimeter, will be one km. So 6.5 km will be 6.5 centimeters on the map. So let's do that, pretty easy. We we'll first just have to measure 6.5 and then from the beacon, draw a circle. Around. Yeah. Okay, that will be the locus of first part. Now for part two, it needs to be at least 2 km from the coastline. The coastline is here, here and here. It needs to be at least 2 km. So 2 km is just 2 centimeters. So let's first uh, draw the locus. So measure 2 centimeters. Will be about here, 2. Then from every point here, um, let's do this one by one. So first one, let's draw on the corners. It needs to be a circle here. I mean, at least a semicircle. Let's do that on this corner and on this corner as well. That's the uh, corners. Okay. Now we have to draw lines parallel to the coastline, which is two centimeters from the coastline. So how would you do that? So you take the same same distance. You go to this point of intersection here, and then you have to cut the You have to cut the arc to form this point of intersection. Now let's see what is this distance. This should give you about two centimeters. Yeah, so almost because of my uh, thing is not very sharp. So this should be two centimeters from that uh, distance. So here, what's next? We have to draw, basically we have to mark so where is two centimeters exactly? So it should be about this point. 
So in that case, usually it should be tangent to the circles. So you move this up, it needs to be tangent to the circles. to try your best to draw this um, yeah, it's not straight so you have to make it straight as possible this straight line needs to stop here on this point this point here it needs to be straight line so at this point needs to be uh, two centimeters and then this needs to continue here radius of 2 same thing here so basically this has to join with this one and then this line here has to be straight so this needs to be a smooth curve right this is a straight line joining these two. And this will be the left final line joining these two points. So it needs to be two, this distance here needs to be two centimeters two centimeters and every so basically everywhere it needs to be two centimeters so this needs to be smooth curve so you have to use uh, your proper tools I guess my tool is not that great it's not showing up fine but uh, you get the point so distance here will be two 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 it has to be equally distance everywhere right now it says construct the boundaries of the region where the fishing can take place and the label the region f so we have two conditions first one is not more than 6.5 it needs to be inside the 6.5 and next one is at least 2.k so it needs to be outside of this region so here it's this region between the circle and this curve will be your region r Okay, this one is your region R, F, sorry, F. So just to recap how to draw these two. So the first one is pretty easy. It needs to be a circle around the beacon. 6.5 will be the radius of that circle. And then for this one, it needs to be at least 2K. So that will be two centimeters from the coastline. So for the straight line part, it needs to be a parallel line. My line is not perfect here, but it needs to be in the same parallel line up till here. Here, this one is curved of a circle radius 2 this one will be straight with this one and then here will be curve as well and then in the end that will be parallel to this one with a distance equally two centimeters in between and the region outside between the uh, circle and this one will be your locus of points that will be the region f okay and that is question uh, number 20 question number 21 here we have the diagram shows the graph of y equal to 2 power x will be this graph and y equal to 2x plus 1 it will be a straight line now part 1 state the gradient of the line y equal to 2x plus 1 so pretty easy this will be the gradient so because we know that line is y equal to mx plus c m is the gradient so in this case 2 will be the gradient now for part two, find the value of x such that x is more than zero and then these two meet. So where they meet, they meet at this point. And this will be the value where they meet, which is about 2.7. So that is part one. Now part B, uh, the diagram shows the graph of y equal to kax power x. That's the graph. Part one, state the value of k. The value of k is just the y-intercept, so basically at y, so at x equal to 0, find the value of y. 
so y will be k a 0 which is anything power 0 is is equal to 1 so k times 1 is k so here is the point which is k is 0 0.5 so value of k will be 0 0.5 because this is 0 0.5 k is the y intercept now find the value of a so we just have to find a point so just use this point which is 1 and 1.5 this is x and y so the equation we have right now is y equal to k is 0 0.5 times a x is 1 so this is x replace this point in here so y is 1.5 equal to 0 0.5 times a x is 1 so a will be 1.5 divided by 0 0.5 that will be 3 so a will be 3 okay now moving on to question number 22 what do we have here we have two circles i think yeah we do uh, we have a point A, B, uh, C, and D lie on circle 1, so A, B, C, and D. Now we have A, E, C, F lie on circle 2. Okay, so we have two circles, 1 and 2. Now, question is what? So, question part 1 is calculate the angle of A, D, C, A, D, C, and C, F, A. So, first one, A, D, C. A, D, C. So we have to find this angle. So pretty easy. We observe here that we have A, B, C, D. They all touches the circle and these two are opposite angles. So we have to use a rule saying that angle B plus angle D is supposed to give you 180. So this one will be 180 minus 73. That is 107. Okay, this one is 107. So now part two, CFA, CFA, where is CFA? So C here, F here, and A here. So same trick. So this is 146, this will be what? 180 minus 146, that will be 34. That will be 34. So let's write down, the first one is 107 and 34. Now, for point B, explain why the center of center this lies on circle 2. So, where is center of circle this? So, we have to, uh, we, don't know where the, we don't know where the center is, but let's say it's somewhere around here, right? Center of circle 1, and circle 2 is here. So, we have to explain why the circle here, it lies inside of circle 2. What's the reason behind this? So what is given to us and from what can we deduce uh, based on the angles and the radius to see what can we have that proves that the center here is actually on this line. So even though it's not pretty obvious, um, we have to use a theory of circles because usually, what do we know? So we know that angle at center, we always know that angle at center is equal to twice the angle at circumference right so we know this theory and let's see where can we find this on this diagram so now we observe that angle at center here is 146 and angle at circumference will be this one or this one so this one is 73 now let's try if you divide by 2 that will give you 73 so it is exactly half of the angle at center so basically it means that this should be the center of the circle I know the shape is not correct but given that this angle is twice the angle at this place it will mean that this is the center of the circle so in that case you just have to write um, according to question uh, angle C E A is two times angle C B E. So by circle theory, so center of circle one lies on 
circle 2. So basically they're trying to say that this is circle 2 and the center is actually here. That's what they are trying to say. Even though the drawing may not indicate the center is here, but according to the theory, angle at center is always twice the angle at circumference. So that will be your reason why. That is 22. Uh, let's move on to 23. So question 23 part A. Factorize completely this one. As you can see, we can take out 5. 5 will be a squared minus 4. Now 4 can also be written as 2 squared. So this becomes 5 a squared minus 2 squared. So that becomes a plus 2 and a minus 2. So a plus 2, a minus 2. Now, part B, a formula connecting x and y is given by this, where k is a constant. Now, given that y equal to this, when x equal to this, find the value of k, so pretty easy. We place the values in this equation, so y minus 1, k over x cubed, that will be 8. So k will be minus 8. That's the first value of k. Now, what else do we have? Find the value of x when y equal to 64, so y is 64 minus 8 over x cube. So cross multiply, you will have x cube equal to this over 64 divided by 8, you have 1, you have 8. So minus 1 over 8. Now x will be cube root of minus 1 over 8, which will be minus 1 over 2. The answer is minus half. Now, question number 24, here we have a man who is 1.8 meters tall, stand on a horizontal ground, 50 meters from a vertical tree. So let's have a look. Let's say this is what? This is my, the ground. And since this is the man, his height is 1.8, right? And it is 50 meters away from, so 50 meters away from a vertical tree. So here we have a tree, for example. Here we have a tree. Now it says the angle, uh, the angle of elevation of the top of the tree from his eye is 30. So from his eye, going to the tree, it's 30, so the angle from his eye. So the angle here is 30 degrees. Okay, so use as much information as necessary. So if this is 50, this also will be 50 here. And this is 1.8. We don't know this one. Let's call this one x and this we don't know we know this angle and this side okay so now to find an estimate for the height of the tree so you have to find the height of the tree so height of the tree is x plus 1.8 so we have to find x and then we can find the height so how would you find the value of x so since we know this angle and this side we have to find this we can use sukato we can use tan in this case because if you see, so ka toa, here we have the adjacent side, so a and a. We're looking for the op opposite side, so we use tan. So tan 30 is equal to this side x over 50. From this, x will be 50 tan 30. So what is the value of tan 30? It's given to us by this. So x will be 50 times 0 0.577. Now we can move by 1 0, becomes here. So 5 times 5.77. So let's solve this one to find the value of x. So 5.77 times 5, that will be 35, 38. 28. So we have two decimal places, move two, it comes here, 28.85. Now for the height, as we have seen, it is x plus 1.8.
so height will be 28.85 plus 1.8 that will be 5603 so your height is 30.65 so correct to a reasonable degree of accuracy so given by 1.8 to 1 deep decimal place so let's use one decimal place will be 30.7 meters that is 24 now question 25 we have part 1 express this as a product of its prime factors so in this case we can just divide 1 by 1 so this will be divide by 2 you have 3 5 so 1 5 uh, 2 8 divide by 2 have 1 7 6 4 divide by 2 you have 0 here that will be 8 8 2 divide by 2 you will have 4 4 1 divide by 3 you have 1 4 7 divide by 7 you have 2 and then 1 divide by 3 we will have 7 so as you can see 7056 is just 1 2 3 4 so 2 power 4 times 3 power 2 times 7 power 2 that is the product of their prime factors so part 2 hence evaluate this so square root of 7056 is equal to square root of 2 this times this times this so what is square root is actually equal to the number power half so we have to bring this one inside it will become 2 power 2 times 3 times 7 so this will be uh, 4 times uh, 3 is what is 12 12 times 7 will be your answer 12 times 7 is what so 7 times 2 will be 14 84 so your answer is 84 and part 1 is 2 power 4 times 3 power 2 and 7 power 2 okay moving on to part b so this can be expressed as the ration, rational number p over q find the value of p and q so let's expand this so we have 5 16 expand 5 times 16 is what so 5 times 16 5 times 6 will be this and that will be 80 80 plus 1 is 81 81 over 16 now square root of that will be square root of this as well that will be square root of 81 over square root of 16 which is 9 over 4 so value of p is 9 and value of q is 4 now part c write down example of an irrational number so you can write pi if you want to so any uh, let's write down you can write down any square root which is not a square number so write down square root of 5 will be an irrational number okay that is question um, 25 now for the last part question 26 so describe fully the transformation that maps triangle XYZ so XYZ onto triangle X P, Q. So this one can only be uh, one option. It can only be an enlargement. Enlargement here. Let's say enlargement. Scale factor of. So let's count. It was 1, 2, 3, 4. Now it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2. And center is this point here, which is the point X, 0, 4. So that is answer part one so how do I know it's an enlargement because the size have changed so it was small and became bigger so that's why it will be an enlargement now part B the diagram in the answer space show that ABC and the point B is this so as you can see here we have ABC and the point B now question part one a translation maps B onto B dash write down the common vector that represent this translation so uh, from B to be dash we have to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 so pretty easy the vector will be 8, 0 
Now part two, a shear in which the x-axis is invariant, maps triangle ABC onto this triangle. Draw this triangle in the answer space. Oh, so here we have the point B already. So let's find the, the factor, the shear factor. So pretty easy, we count. One, two, it became one, two, this is eight. So two to become eight, it is shear factor of four. Right. So now let's draw the rest. So this one remains the same because it is on the x-axis. This one will also move to this point. Okay, now let's join. This will be the triangle under the transformation of shear factor 4. So that's this will be uh, C prime and A prime will also be on this point. So your answer here will be shear factor of 4. So that was the last question of this paper. I hope that was somewhat helpful. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.